Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. In this video, I discuss 10 years of fake Arctic news. I wrote my first article about the Arctic nine years ago in the Register. I was making fun of some ridiculous predictions by climate scientists about the Arctic melting. Just a few weeks ago, predictions of Arctic ice collapse were buzzing all over the internet. Some scientists were predicting that the North Pole may be ice-free for the first time this summer. Others predicted that the entire polar ice cap would disappear. Needless to say, climate scientists didn't like my piece very much, so Walt Meyer from the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado, came after me in the register pretty hard. So let's look at the predictions I was making fun of. Expert, Arctic polar cap may disappear this summer dated March 1, 2008. The polar cap in the Arctic may well disappear this summer due to the global warming, Dr. Olav Orheim, head of the Norwegian International Polar Year Secretariat, said on Friday. Here's another one from National Geographic from June 20, 2008. Arctic warming has become so dramatic that the North Pole may melt this summer, reports scientists studying the effects of climate change in the field. We're actually projecting this year that the North Pole may be free of ice for the first time in history, David Barber of the University of Manitoba told National Geographic News. And here's another one from April 2008. North Pole could be ice-free in 2008. You know when climate change is biting hard when instead of a vast expanse of snow, the North Pole is a vast expanse of water. This year, for the first time, Arctic scientists are preparing for that possibility. There's this thin first-year ice even at the North Pole at the moment, says Mark Ceres. This raises the specter of the possibility that you could become ice-free at the North Pole this year. So we had the leading experts from Norway, Canada, and the United States predicting an ice-free North Pole in 2008. These ridiculous predictions by these top experts motivated a British explorer, Louis Pugh, to try to kayak to the North Pole in 2008. On Saturday, he's due to set off on the 1,200-kilometer expedition from Norway to the North Pole, a journey expected to take between two and three weeks. A support ship will follow the kayak to provide Mr. Pugh with food and respite from the brutal conditions. This will be my hardest challenge to date, the self-proclaimed ice bear told me. Well, needless to say, Louis Pugh didn't get very far. In fact, he barely made it any distance at all before he had to quit because of the ice. His failure didn't look very good for climate experts, so the fake news press tried to cover for him. Oslo, Reuters, a British explorer has kayaked within 1,000 kilometers of the North Pole to highlight a rapid shrinking of Arctic ice and put pressure on governments to do mortified global warming. Then they went on to say that in normal years there would be no open water north of Spitsbergen. The map on the right is the sea ice extent map from the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado for September 2008, and this was the route which Lewis Pugh was trying to take to the North Pole. The pink line shows the median ice edge from 1981 to 2010, and as you can see there was actually more ice than normal north of Spitsbergen, the exact opposite of what the article claimed. But as usual, the fakery gets even worse. The article on the right is from the Monthly Weather Review from November 1922. The Arctic seems to be warming up, reports from fishermen, seal hunters, and explorers who sail the seas about Spitsbergen in the eastern Arctic, all point to a radical change in climatic conditions, and hitherto unheard of high temperatures in that part of the Earth's surface. Many old landmarks are so changed as to be unrecognizable. Where formerly great masses of ice were found there, now often moraines, accumulations of earth and stones. At many points where glaciers formerly extended far into the sea, they have entirely disappeared. And down here is the punchline. Last winter, the ocean did not freeze over even on the north coast of Spitsbergen. Remember that the fake news article from 2008 said, in normal years, there would be no open water north of Spitsbergen. Well, in 1922, there was no ice on the north coast of Spitsbergen, and according to NASA, 1922 was one of the coldest years on record. It's all fake news so far, but of course the story gets even worse. Here's an article from 10 years ago from Seth Borenstein of the Associated Press. Could all Arctic ice be gone by 2012? 
Satellite images say it might be. Relentless melting of the Arctic greatly accelerated this summer. Global warming may have passed an ominous tipping point. Greenland's ice sheet melted nearly 19 billion tons more than the previous high mark. The Arctic is screaming, said Mark Ceres. This week after reviewing his own new data, NASA climate scientist Jay Swally said, at this rate, the Arctic Ocean could be nearly ice-free at the end of summer by 2012, much faster than previous predictions. The Arctic is often cited as the canary in the coal mine for climate warming, said Zwally, who as a teenager hauled coal. Now as a sign of climate warming, the canary has died. It's time to start getting out of the coal mines. Ooh, that sounds bad. 552 billion tons of ice melted this summer from the Greenland ice sheet, according to preliminary satellite data to be released today by NASA. That's 15% more than the annual average summer melt, beating 2005's record. Here's another article by Seth Bornstein of the Associated Press from June 2008. NASA scientists were toast. Hansen, echoing work by other scientists, said that in 5 to 10 years, the Arctic will be free of sea ice in the summer. Representative Ed Markey of Massachusetts said, Dr. Hansen was right. 20 years later, we recognize him as a climate prophet. Well, let's look at the actual data and see if Dr. Hansen really was right. This is the Arctic sea ice extent graph from the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado. The graph shows sea ice extent since the 2007 Arctic ice free forecast date. As you can see, there's been no change in extent over the last 10 years. Extent hasn't increased, it hasn't decreased. There's nothing going on in the Arctic. All their forecasts were dead wrong. And what about Greenland ice? According to the Danish Meteorological Institute, Greenland just gained a huge amount of ice over the last year. In fact, it was the fifth highest gain in the last 37 years. So their forecasts about Greenland were wrong too. These climate scientists don't know what they're talking about, and the fundamental problem is that they believe that carbon dioxide drives Arctic ice conditions. It doesn't. They're beating a dead horse theory which has failed over and over again, but they just can't let go of it. But I'm not done quite yet. As always, the story gets worse. Here's another claim from the 2007 article. In the United States, a weakened Arctic blast moving south to collide with moist air from the Gulf of Mexico can mean less rain and snow in some areas, including the drought-stricken southeast, said Michael McCracken, a former federal climate scientist. He was claiming that a weakened jet stream causes drought in the south. Compare that with the claims this week after Hurricane Harvey, where they said the exact opposite. CO2 is changing the jet stream in ways that will create more Harveys. Climate science predicted a weaker jet stream, and Harvey stalled because of a weakened jet stream. So now they're saying that flooding was caused by a weakened jet stream, but 10 years ago they said that drought was caused by a weakened jet stream. Whatever the current conditions are, they switch their story around. These people are snake oil salesmen not scientists. Climate scientists have no clue what they're talking about. They have a terrible track record. And they simply change their story as needed to keep their scam alive. It's all fake news. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.